I'm David, and you might remember me from such films as Café La Art, Techniques of the Marisa, Can You Believe? It's been 25 years I've been teaching and pouring these beautiful patterns. So today, I'm going to tell you about the latest and greatest, everything that uh, I've learned. That won't take long. And <laughs> um, my, the way I teach saute art now is, I call it flow dynamics. I'm very interested in getting the right flow at the right angle and speed into the cup, and this makes these patterns absolutely beautiful. To help me, I have Tia Allen with me, a 15-year uh, vivace barista, and also uh, our latte art trainer. I have Bradley Langdale, a very skilled three-and-a-half-year veteran with vivace, and uh, they would like to tell you a little bit about how they're going to approach it. Tia? Hi there. Um, well, one of the first uh, things that I talk about with uh, new students and baristi um, is it's kind of the, the essentials of how you start out the design. And the first thing is with uh, nicely textured milk and well spun um, before you start pouring, because you'll, you'll run into some separation uh, problems and it'll make it difficult for design uh, pouring. Um, the dreaded foam ball. Yeah, you oh, get. Oh, I hate the foam ball. You get the oh, foam yeah. ball, and then you, what you've got is a, it's a weird part. Um, the other thing that I, I look at when I'm when I'm watching someone initially start out is, is how they're holding the cup. Um, because part of the process of pouring is not just the hand that's doing the, the back and forth motion, but the cupping hand and how you tilt that. That's your canvas. Um, and, and that's going to decipher how big your pattern becomes and how soon. Um, so I like to, to find a spot where you can hold the cup really easily and not have a jerking motion while you're flattening that surface. Um, and so the next thing I, I like to look at too is uh, the distance from how far away from the cup you start um, pouring because you've got that round surface and if you're going too far up a to on top of it, uh, it will create undercurrents that are, are really hard to get out of as well. So you lose control. So a lot of it is, is the flow of dynamics. Um, and how you can make variables smooth and not choppy. Um, and, it, and it helps me to think of you're either downstream or you're upstream. That's how I talk about it going into the cup. Yep. And Brad, what do you got? Uh, just uh, pouring at a proper speed. I really like to concentrate on pouring at a very consistent speed. Don't want to go too fast, depending on what you're doing. Also, um, also positioning in the cup when you're pouring, especially for the wreathing hearts that I do and the other interesting designs, uh, just getting down your hand position and memorizing where to start and your flow rates and how fast to pour and just uh, really concentrating on memorizing what you're doing and trying to try to replicate that every time. And would you say that the different cup sizes have different flow? Definitely different flow rates. Good, good. Well, let's go to the machine. Awesome, awesome. This is the front of the Foam Knife One. It's a tip by Shojiro Saito that has revolutionized what we can do with a steam tip. Perfect foams coming your way. So here's the technique. I've got the steam wand laying on the side of the pitcher. I stretch with a very gentle pressure, very gentle stretch, to achieve the amount of foam I want. To blend the foam in, I bury the steam wand. And it's very important that the milk does not climb up the side of the pitcher that the speed of the roll is just right to blend in the air without adding more air. For latte, we serve at about 15 or 20 percent total expansion, which means a, a harder foam. We call it HD, high definition foam. The mouthfeel foam is the 40 percent expansion for cappuccino and macchiato. Here comes the spoon, here comes the spoon, and I say, it's all right. You try that with any other tip, it's going to look quite a bit different. So for cappuccino and macchiato, I'm using the one-third of a liter, which is also our training pitcher because it's the hardest. For cafe latte, which Seattleites like, I'm using two-thirds of a liter pitcher. Okay, so I'm going to show you three different pouring speeds for three different sizes of cups next. If I have a little dome in there, I'm done. The shake, I need those two little bumps, and then I can see if there's a foam ball. So it looks pretty good right now. And if it's too thick, I'll knock a little off the top. Okay, so the pouring speed for this is very delicate.
and I have a reasonable filling of my cup. I'm going to show a medium pouring speed for the cappuccino cup. I used to have big bubble nightmares in back in 89 and 90 when we were first getting going. I'd have dreams of like really crappy foam. I'm not kidding you, man. Nice and fast. Nice and slow. When I do the wreath and heart, I kind of like to think of doing a rosetta to begin with, just on the outside of the cup. Start pouring about one third on the outside and get a nice flow going. Start the rosetta, let the flow pull the rosetta away from you. Once it starts to slow down, then you start to pull the rosetta towards you, spin it, and make a nice little heart. I'm going to uh, tilt my cup and have a little bit of a D shape there, and I like to pour towards the middle of that D. Start my side to side motion, big side to side, spin around and in. I have real trouble getting that slow side to side. I, I'm a little bit jealous. Well, <laughs> and, and the side to side I find is a relaxed state. So if you, if you do it all day long, it, it feels very yeah. uh, natural. I see these great teams of, of people studying so hard and pouring such beautiful patterns. That's why we made this little tape for you guys. I'm going to pull my uh, DVDs off the market. Techniques of the Barista and Cafe Latte Art are outdated, but I'm very happy that Teal and Brad and I could, could share with you uh, what we're doing right now at Vivace. See ya.